they were, they were almost laughing at me for calling out Gaelic. Yeah. People that, you know, that never heard much Gaelic or anything, they'd laugh, you know, when you speak the Gaelic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. My name is Michael, but they call me Mickey. Mickey McNeil. Colin used to come in and we would speak Gaelic and we'd sing Gaelic songs together and all. Yes, yeah, that was it, you know, and it was wonderful. Mickey was very outgoing and he uh, was an elder, a very respected elder in the community and uh, he had a lot of knowledge that I was really interested in hearing. Yeah. And his style of Gaelic and his style of talking yeah. is so excellent. I had been away for 10 years so living around Canada so I wanted to come home and uh, I came back and Mickey's was full of Gaelic and he was just a really great opportunity since I was working at the village anyway to uh, take up a master apprenticeship program with Mickey and we did that and I heard all kinds of really mm, local yeah. stories mm. and great anecdotes and uh, yeah. proverbs mm. and yeah, you name it. A bishop spell welcome Bolliana. B. B. I sort of started in my 30s, I think I was, um, learning Gaelic. It had been something I wanted to do for many years, but there was no avenue to do so. So um, when I learned about classes, I went there and, and I pretty much reached a plateau and then there wasn't anywhere really to go. And so I was frustrated by that. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to be able to um, converse with elders. So that was really what drew me to the mentorship program. I was really excited by that opportunity. I think when I very first started learning Gaelic, I had the expectation of learning Gaelic words so that I could just speak the way I would normally speak. And um, it wasn't far into my, my learning journey that I realized, hold on, we're, I'm not going to learn Gaelic to speak English in Gaelic. I'm going to learn Gaelic to speak Gaelic. And there's so much more that, that comes yeah. along with that. Well, uh, well, I, I was around, I was six or seven, yeah, before I spoke English. We weren't allowed to speak Gaelic in school, no, no. But we had a, a, a teacher from Sydney and she was very fond of the Gaelic, you know. It was always Gaelic every Sunday. Every Sunday he never missed. And you know, some of the old people were saying, what is he bothering at that? That's going to be gone, gone, gone. Mm -hmm. But he had something. He said, keep up the Gaelic. Mm -hmm. Cum suas a Gaelic, he said, Gaelic. Mm -hmm. And he was right. It came back. It came back. I loved that, you know. But I, you know, I thought that the Gaelic was gone, gone, gone. All was gone. But till those people came along. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that was so ha I was happy over that. Yes, I'm very happy over that. You have to keep at it. You can't let it go. My Gaelic, I love it. And I'd fight for it any day. I'd go to battle for it. Well, I would wish that they would continue with it. And continue with the older style Gaelic. Uh, just to continue and keep pushing it and trying to get people that are interested in it. I saw a video of Anna McKinnon on it and I said I want to meet this lady. She just, she was full of fun and full of Gaelic, beautiful beautiful Gaelic and uh, she reminded me a lot of my grandmother. <laughs> I did meet her, and uh, and then when the program came out, uh, they said, "Who would you like to work with?" And Anna McKinnon was the top of my list. We we just love spending time with the older people because they have so much to share. I mean, these people, they're native Gaelic speakers. Gaelic 
has been in their family for generations. You can go back, I mean, Gaelic, the roots of Gaelic go back 6,000 years. So the chain has never been broken. It's amazing that it's still in Cape Breton, you know, when you think about it. So like Anna, she has pure Loch Harbour Gaelic from Scotland is what she's speaking. So, um, so it's a treat for us to spend time with someone like Anna and to hear her stories and to hear her Gaelic and to kind of get a glimpse of her life. Well, I feel like Gaelic was always in my life in some form. Um, we visited my grandmother a lot, my, uh, my mother's mother. She was a native Gaelic speaker, and she lived just 20 minutes up the road in Ottawa Brook. And she was a McNeil, so she was from uh, a bear descent. And uh, every Sunday after church for my entire childhood would go down and would visit. I think his father had passed away on, in Scotland. He came over with, I think, um, his mother and maybe seven siblings, and they came to this spot. They had relatives in this area, and they built a, a log cabin just over the hill there. And then in 1882, they built the, the house that we're sitting in now. My son Archie, he's four now, but uh, when he was 18 months, so just when he was learning to speak, which was really great timing, um, we started the program with Anna, and we started in November of 2014, and we traveled down to her place in Inverness on the Banks Road, um, four hours, four or five hours. We'd spend an afternoon there every week, and uh, it was great. Family, she is family. She's not like family, she is family to us. Archie calls her Nana. Oh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. I just can't believe how, you know, she's doing, teaching him the Gaelic. And do a square Oh, it just does me a world of good. It's like as if I'm thinking I'm going to live forever. Even when I go to bed at night, I lay on the pillow and I think of him. And I'm thinking of Rosie when she gets to the age where she can talk. You know, she's gonna, her, that's going to be her first language. Well, she learn English too, but... I really want them to have a sense of who they are and where they're from and... So when I was growing up, I mean, the culture was quite strong, but there was still some confusion with me about, um, like, am I Scottish? What exactly? Who are we? So once I got involved with Gaelic, I learned that, you know, I'm a Gael. So I want my children to know that they are Gaels and what that means. Ba, 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 it gave me more courage and more understanding of, I mean, I always figured that Gaelic really meant everything in the world, that there was nothing ever other than Gaelic that meant so much or should have meant so much to people. Oh, it's just so heartwarming that a person has interest in learning the language. I think it's a wonderful thing when you hear young people wanting to learn. Well, you want to help them. You want to help them out, if we can help them. If there's any help that you can, uh, that give, you them. can give them. There's no one else around that has the kind of Gaelic that they have uh, because they kept it up with each other all their lives. It's very rare to have um, uh, a married couple who both have Gaelic and they, they kept it up. Uh, because of that, so they, they remember things that nobody else would remember. Well, I think I told her that if we had anything that we could help her with, we were more than willing to help her. But uh, I don't know if she learned very much from us. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, I think she's doing excellent. She's doing a wonderful job. That was the first language we learned. We didn't know another language until we started going to school. And uh, when, when we started school, Gaelic was frowned upon. They didn't want you speaking Gaelic or didn't want any part of the Gaelic language. Oh, it was all Gaelic. Everything was Gaelic. And every person you'd meet in the area, it was always Gaelic spoken. We didn't know anything else but Gaelic. As the older ones died off, you know, the younger generation, they, they didn't have the Gaelic. I just um, started going around to the dances and uh, really loved the music and then I started to meet the odd person who would say a few words of Gaelic to me and I just became very fascinated by it and I can't really say why but when I spend time around people who who um, speak Gaelic I just I feel very at home 
and so that's what made me want to want to learn it. I think that's the most important thing is the interest that she has in it. Oh, I think it's so important and um, there's so few uh, native speakers of Gaelic left here, just a very small handful and when we think of it, like Vincent was saying that that the old people here had had words for things that we don't use now. Well, I, I worry that the Gaelic that we're going to be passing on as learners is just going to get weaker and weaker and less rich. So it's so important that we learn everything we can from people who actually grew up in the language. When I'm teaching in the future or speaking to, to people in the community, I'm passing on the richest Gaelic that I possibly can. It's going to be lost if it's not preserved and somebody to teach it and keep learning, you know. Oh, they're very warm-hearted. They're very warm-hearted. They're kind. Their feelings are warm. You feel like you have something in common with them. Oh, yes, this is the thing. Yes, this is the thing. And it's just amazing, the friendship that's out there. And it seems like with the Gaelic, they're more warm-hearted or something, you know, like there's a different meaning to their personality. Uh, no, yeah. it is a very uh -huh. special relationship but, uh, that happens um, because there's a phrase in Gaelic, a goon, a goon. Oh, um, yes, fr from knee to knee about to um, knee. the way that the learning is passed on and in some ways even though we're already grown up we're doing that learning mm -hmm. from knee to knee mm -hmm. in, in some kind of a way so it is a very special relationship and I'm so grateful that they that I got to take part in this program that they have these programs and I hope to see more of them while we have our native speakers because I mean you know time's going by and if we can help out these seniors and if we can get some language and some stories and like I say a little glimpse of their lives I think I think we should do it and I think um, it's really important to have social spaces to be able to speak Gaelic to be able to express the cultural um, arts mm -hmm. like song and storytelling and um, share the neat little turns of phrase or the special little words um, and so there needs to be a social space for that and I, I can't do that uh, solely alone I definitely would like to see it being kept up and preserved, you know, for future generations. That they have enough young people that are interested in learning it, you know. The language is just one component okay. of the culture and um, I think it's the culture that's the medium for the language. And the language is required to create yeah, cultural yeah. expression okay. in the song and the story, but it isn't really about saving the language. Um, I suppose a person could go ahead and learn Gaelic and if they didn't have any of the other cultural aspects then what would it even mean?